I want to thank you very much and uh, thank you for your wonderful initiative because it, this is this is a very difficult subject to talk about and think about. It's uh, a <clears throat> for one reason it's uh, rather misunderstood. We're having a lot of trouble understanding why substance abuse and addiction is happening, and we're having trouble helping those we love. And it's a um, it's it's very difficult to watch a disease like this ravage our loved ones. So um, I wanted to come up here and talk to you a bit about my personal experience with this. So um, basically, this is this is something. Only really my, my family knows about, so I really talked about it in public, but I'd like to discuss it with all of you. Um, a challenge I have with addiction. I'm addicted to Frosted Flakes. It's true, I'm addicted to Frosted Flakes. And I want to talk to you a bit about it because it's something I, I really struggle with. Uh, some of you laughed. <laughs> and it happens. It happens, I, I, if I say this out loud, people say I'm addicted, you know, I say I'm addicted to Frosted Flakes. It's kind of funny, it's like somebody isn't expecting that, and I understand that. Um, but when I say I'm addicted to Frosted Flakes, I mean, you need to understand, I really mean it. I can't stop eating Frosted Flakes. Uh, they're, um, well, let me explain it to me. Let me tell you a bit about how, how, how it works for me. So first of all, I, uh, I started eating Frosted Flakes when I was very young, and it was kind of like a breakfast cereal, so I'd eat it in the morning. Uh, and they're delicious. I always liked them. I started with Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, and I would eat those from time to time. But then as I got older, I tried to have a more healthier option, so I'd go out and buy, like, I don't know, grains or whatever they sell. And uh, it just didn't do it for me, so I started putting Frosted Flakes in the cereal and eating them with milk. Um, that was in my parents' house. Eventually I moved out, but I realized while I was moved out, I was living at home, I had to have Frosted Flakes in the house. And here's how I know I'm addicted. It's not so much that I need to eat them, they just, I just have to, it has to be there. You know, there, I have to have a box of Frosted Flakes in the house. I have two boxes right now. Um, and uh, I noticed that I really like to eat them and I can't stop eating them. I also noticed I'm very particular about my Frosted Flakes. So for example, uh, when I was uh, first at home eating Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, those are great. But I'll be honest with you, I don't know what they're doing to our food, but that stuff, it's not the same. It's not the Frosted Flakes I was having when I was a kid. I, I'm being honest with you. So I switched. I started going to Aldi and I bought their brand, uh, the Millville Frosted Flakes, uh, with the Polar Bear, which I'm very upset about because I really like Tony the Tiger. So uh, it's very important to me that when I have the Frosted Flakes, I pour them in the bowl and then I sit and look at Tony the Tiger. That was part of the experience. And then I turn the box over and read those on the... But this now... I mean, I know they say it has, like, have you guys ever seen the label on the Melville Frosted Flakes? There's like a superior gold, like, taster's uh, award. And it's, honestly, they are better, so I've been eating those. I love Frosted Flakes so much that um, it was the one thing I risked my life for during the pandemic. You all know what I'm talking about. There was that one thing we all walked into a gas station to get during the pandemic. We were like, I don't, I don't care, you know. Uh, this was it for me. I walked into an Aldi and bought uh, Frosted Flakes. Uh, during the pandemic, then I went home. I had to, I had to have a box at home. Now, here's the thing. The funny thing about Frosted Flakes is, it's not like M&M's, for example. Now, I am seriously addicted to M&M's. Let me tell you how addicted to M&M's I am. I'm so addicted to M&M's that I don't eat them. I drink them. I drink them. So I'll take M&M's, I'll pour them into a cup, and I'll down them like this. I know better than to keep M&M's in the house. I know that. But Frosted Flakes is different. It's like food. I can get away with it. Like if somebody says, you know, what'd you eat today? I can say I had Frosted Flakes for breakfast. It's okay. But the problem I'm having is it's a problem. I'm not comfortable with how much I like Frosted Flakes, but I don't know what to do about it. You know, if I tell people I like Frosted Flakes, they say, okay, you know, I like Cocoa Pebbles. I'm like, no, no, it's not like that. It's, I don't like Frosted Flakes. I don't want to eat them anymore, but uh, I can't help it. Um, and I don't know who to talk to about. Like, okay, so I, you know, I mean, I, if I come to a friend, I say, listen, man, I have a problem. I eat a lot of Frosted Flakes. They say, well, stop. I'm like, I can't stop. They're like, just stop eating it. Like, what's wrong with you? I can't go to a chef and say, so I'm dealing with a very serious issue. I have an addiction to Frosted Flakes. Not, you know? So I'm like, you know, I don't know. 
And the problem is when I do try to talk about it, even seriously, at some point, as serious as you're trying to take me right now, it's kind of funny to watch a grown man uh, complain about his terrifying addiction to Frosted Flakes. So I decided to help myself. I tried to figure out why am I addicted to Frosted Flakes? When did this start? Where did it come from? And so what I did is I sat down and I tried to go as far back in my memory as possible to figure out when was the first time I experienced this affection for Frosted Flakes, this deep connection to it. And here's how far back I could trace it. I remember the first time Frosted Flakes appeared in my consciousness. This is my earliest memory. I was about four or five years old. And at that time, we lived on a house on Apolline. When, my, when, when I came to this country, I was three years old with my parents. And uh, we came to uh, an apartment. We stayed on the second floor, floor of an apartment on Apolline, uh, just, just near Warren Avenue. And it was summertime. And I was in the backyard in one of those plastic little waiting pools. I was in there, and I was eating Frosted Flakes out of one of those little cups. You guys know the ones at the gas station or the hotel? I was kind of eating Frosted Flakes. I was sitting in the pool, and my father was standing next to another man, and they were talking. Sun was out. I was in a pool. My dad's up there. He's talking to this man. And then my father, I don't know what they were talking about, but at some point my father said, al kid It was the first time I heard that word, al kid which is like, it's lying in, uh, in Arabic. It's like, wow, that's a word, al kid he was telling them, you know, he's like, I don't know who know who al kid I'm like, wow. It's an interesting word. Uh, we translate al kid as lying, but it's a little more than that. It's lying with intention to deceive. It's not like a white lie. It's, it's, the, it's malintent. It's intention to deceive. And I also remember from where I was laying down, you know, I was sitting in the pool, I could see uh, the balcony from the backyard where... Uh, my mother would take us out when we were very little, and on hot summer days, she would cut up some watermelons and some halloum cheese, white cheese, and we'd sit up there and eat. I started thinking about this memory and reflecting on it, and I started thinking of the Frosted Flakes, and then it dawned on me. It's not the Frosted Flakes I'm really after. What I'm really why I eat Frosted Flakes is because I, through channeling this physical thing, I can go back to that time. I can try to experience it. Because here's the thing. I know that house on Ampeline is still there, but it's not the same. My father is still alive. He's still here. My mother is still alive and still here, thank God. But it's still not the same. Summers are not the same. Wading pools are not the same. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's different. But there's Frosted Flakes. At least there's Frosted Flakes. At least I can try to capture that. That's how I try to channel that memory. Here's the truth. I eat Frosted Flakes because I miss my dad. For him, it's uh, fish and chips. My dad loves fish and chips. Anytime I want to go out, if I, if I want to bond with my father, I say, Bubba, let's go to Ramsar and get some fish and chips. And he goes out, he's really happy, I drive over to the house, I pick him up, we drive over to Ramshorn, we order him, we eat it. And for him, I think the reason is, when he was growing up, when he was younger, he spent some of the best years of his life, his youth, in London. And in London, they see a lot of fish and chips, and it's a way for him to kind of also remember. But see, London's not the same, and those days are not the same. But there's still fish and chips, you know? And the other thing about Frosted Flakes, I really love the tiger. The tiger is such a, such a strong memory for me. It's another way I used to bond with my father. Again, I told you, Tony the Tiger is a big deal. One of the real setbacks about eating that Millville Frosted Flakes with a stupid polar bear is that it's not Tony the Tiger. And as, as tasty as they are, it takes away from the experience. Tigers have a very uh, deep personal connection to me. When I was uh, very young, my father and I used to watch a movie. It was Walt Disney's The Jungle Book. Jungle Book, there's this big tiger called Shere Khan. Mowgli has to defeat Shere Khan, right? In the end, there's this big battle, and Baloo the bear helps him defeat Shere Khan. And then the movie ends with this pretty little girl in pink who, like, you know, was getting water for her, for her family, and then they go off. I love Tony the Tiger. I, I, I often associate, with, you know, it's my favorite animal. I just love, it. it's just a prideful animal. It's beautiful. And that's another thing, is there's that bond, that memory, that connection that I have that evokes those feelings. And I think that's why I turned to Frosted Flakes, because through the cereal, I could try to relive a past that's gone. But here's the thing. 
I don't know when I'm going to be able to finally convince myself of this, but it's true. I don't need the Frosted Flakes. I still have my father. I still have those memories. I still have those experiences. It's a part of me. It's with me. I don't need to evoke them through physical matter. It's spiritual. It's already in there. So I'm hoping sooner rather than later I can abandon this uh, attachment to Frosted Flakes and, uh, and move on from there. <coughs> You know, uh, that's funny, I just remembered something. I just realized something. I'm going to share something with you. Not, it's a little irrelevant, but it's kind of in the theme. But um, I want to share with you a memory I just had. And then I'll close. One night I had a dream within a dream. I was driving on a back road by myself. It was late at night, around midnight, but not quite, and it was sometime in winter. There were lots of trees. I pull up to a driveway. I park my car. I step out of the car. A beautiful girl emerges from the house. She comes up to me, gives me a really big hug. And when she pulls back, right there on her sweater, there's the image of a tiger. A stranger. We got a great show for you guys tonight. Make some noise, make some noise, everybody. First, we're going to welcome my uh, dear friend and brother, the poet Ali Sobot. Make some noise for Ali.